We are in Moldova with Nikki and Igor, and Nikki's headed to a nail salon to fix her broken talons. <sighs> it's so embarrassing. He um, he doesn't like to really be affectionate to me, like make love. It's so embarrassing. It's the only thing that Nikki can talk about, even with strangers. She's telling the nail tech about the drama going on in the relationship, and Nikki asks if it's normal for men to be standoffish. Is, is that normal for Moldovan men to not really be sexually? No, no. I don't think so. Then she tells the nail tech that it seems like Igor is always trying to suppress her strong personality, and it makes her feel like he's trying to prove his manhood and claim more control in the relationship. Do they make their women submit and go lower than them and they are high and powerful? Yes. 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 This is my uh, opinion. So again, Nikki is confirming that Igor does not like her. I think this masculine energy excuse from Igor is just that. It's an excuse. So now Nikki is convinced, thanks to the nail tech, that his behavior is learned and she needs to break him. I have to break that side of him, you know? like. Being in the United States, I, he can't have that same mentality. Uh, yeah, good luck with that. Find an American you boy. You don't need a Moldovan uh, boy. <laughs> no. Well, you know what? They're, they're, they're no better in America, girl. How rude. I love my American husband. He opens my door. We play video games. He brings me Chipotle. What Moldovan man's gonna do that? I'm an American. So as Nikki's time there is coming to a close, Igor has planned a romantic date for them. They reserve me a little strange boat for you. What this makes is Swan. It strange? Swan. Yeah. He looks. Oh my gosh! He talks so slow. He takes her on a paddle boat. That's it. This, uh, like our relationship, it's sometimes we have a uh, good moments, we have a bad moments. Then he says, but if they work together in their relationship, the way they work together to paddle, they can get through the turbulence. Yeah, yeah. As a you team. understand, like a team. Yeah. I love you too. Their relationship is constantly like this. They blow up and have a terrible fight. Then they have a nice talk for like two minutes and everything is water under the bridge for 30 seconds. So then Nikki sits down with Igor to tell him that she wants to go forward with the engagement celebration. And she asks him, Igor, do you want to have this celebration? You see how many times we're fighting? We'll but never stop to try understanding each other. You need more intimacy. And he says, that's why I told you about my dream of being with another woman. This is a very good ch chance for have more intimacy, you gotta more sex. Dream. I can't believe he wasted no time going there again. After she got so upset, and it's clear she's not okay with it, he's still pushing the issue. It's 100% clear it's because he's not attracted to her. My heart feeling in love with her, but my body don't feel the same. So why are you with her, Igor? It's not fair, but Nikki knows how to make it fair. If I offer that to you, then you gotta offer it to me with another guy. Touche, Nikki. And okay, I don't necessarily agree with any of this. I think the marriage bed is best kept between the husband and the wife, and inviting more people just invites more problems. But I think honestly, she said that because she knew what his reaction was gonna be. I don't want to see that. Why? No. So I have to watch you with another woman, but then you can't see me with another guy. Isn't this such a wholesome and well-rounded relationship? Talk about couple goals. Why well, I gotta see you, a girl, another girl and me? Yes. Why? <laughs> I have only ever slapped a man once in my life. This would warrant a slap and a storm off and the relationship is over. He doesn't take her seriously. Look at him. That's really so disrespectful that you laugh in my face. So at this point, Igor is like, no, I don't want to argue. Just stop. It's too stressful. I don't want to do this. You don't like to take accountability for anything you do wrong. 
that's a problem. How are you talking about? I'm telling you. So remember where his friend told him that he needed to man up and show Nikki who's in charge? I think that's why he won't have this conversation with her because he knows he would lose, but he needs to win. Now when I say it's you do something wrong, you don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. That's a problem. Thank Here we yourself. go. So what happened with these two in this episode? Any progress? Any healing? Nope. Just a rerun. A pure show. You know, I think that there's way bigger fish to fry than our engagement celebration at this point. Why aren't they on the 90 day the other way or before the 90 days? Like, are they even officially engaged? Is this a dead end? Yes. No, are we going to progress? No. Are we going to move on? No. Are we going to resolve? No. Like, what are we doing? I don't know. So let's move on to a couple that I think is actually a real couple, and that's Sam and Citra. Sam is taking Citra out to go have fun and enjoy one another, and as they're leaving, they see his dad. Now, we've already been told multiple times that dad believes in aliens. I don't know why they keep making it such a point to talk about. A lot of people believe in aliens. I think they're trying to contrast this with him not believing in God, so Sam's conversion is gonna be a big problem, maybe. It looks to me almost like footsteps went off this way. Bigfoot Actually, or alien? <laughs> Does anyone have any good stories? Please tell me if you have alien stories. Crazy as that is, that night I did hear something on the roof and then the next morning that patch, like a circle patch was in the grass. I know somebody who personally claimed seeing something in their backyard and then the next thing they knew they were waking up on their back in the backyard. So. That night, just something was weird. X-Files, called them. Wait, 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 What? Really? Hold on, I gotta look this up. So anyways, they take off to do some things that they probably won't be able to do after Sam's conversion. They're gonna have some drinks. Let her be carefree and a little mm -hmm, wild but, child. But he took me to the bar, like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> They get to the bar and he has to order her something yummy because she usually doesn't drink. And I don't know what the bartender made, but it looked really good. You can't taste alcohol, huh? I thought it's gonna be water like this. You know me, I don't I'm not big on drinking. I don't like I don't drink something that tastes bad. Weeks ago I posted a short about Sam and I got a comment on that video from a certain someone who will remain unnamed. I'm not going to post a screenshot because they deleted the comment shortly after, I think, to remain anonymous. They might get in trouble for divulging information, but I was told that the Sam was drinking were not alcoholic. Take that for what it's worth. I am just the messenger, okay? Your whole goal is trying to get one of these balls. Oh, I saw that, Sam. <laughs> it's hard to not just kind of go at each other and like, I'm struggling with it. I think I know why Clayton's thirst drives me crazy and Sam's doesn't. Sam doesn't act desperate and feeling bad for himself the way Clayton does. Clayton pities himself for not getting <laughs> laid and it's gross. Anyways, food arrives and Citra's like, dang, that's a lot of food. Are you trying to get me fat or something? Fat knocked up. That kind of made me laugh. I thought it was cute. These two are so comfortable around each other. I think they're going to make it. I'm rooting for them. What are some other like things that like have to change after I convert and we get married? So Sam asked Citra about what else will be expected of him after the conversion and she's like, well, you can't drink. And Sam says, When you can't, like you, you're not supposed to do things, like then that makes it harder, but. And that totally resonated with me. If someone tells me not to do something or that I should stop, I just want to do the opposite. There could even be something I'm thinking about doing and sometimes someone will come along and be like, oh yeah, this room would look great if you painted it blue. And then I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to paint it blue anymore. What's wrong with me? But like, I want you to help set the guideline and like where we call it quits on things, you know? You can't rely on Citra for your sobriety, but also you can't rely on Citra for being a good Muslim. The whole part of converting is making a public statement that in your heart this is serious and this is who you are now and you believe it, you're betting your salvation on it. Sintra is thinking after conversion, she won't have to worry because he'll want to do what's right in their God's eyes. Drinking, drugs, it used to be a big part of me. Always that monkey on your back that's just telling you, do it, do it, have fun, just say F it and. Sam admits that he's scared he might fall off the wagon after converting and he doesn't want to risk losing Citra. 
overall, it's obvious he's only converting for her. So I don't know how serious she is expecting him to take it. It's the next day and they're heading out to find a mosque where Sam can get the conversion taken care of. He tells Citra he's nervous and a lot of people where he lives thinks it's weird he's converting to Islam because they use a bidet and don't eat pork and the producers are like, Sam, are you gonna miss pork? Mmm, look that way. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Sam gets into the mosque, he sees the other men on the floor praying, and I think that's when it hit home for him that this isn't a decision he should be making lightly. Being in the mosque really isn't my normal cup of tea, like it suddenly hits me just open. Like, this is really happening, am I really about to do this? And Sam goes in, he gets introduced, then he sits down and the guy asks him, why he wants to convert and Sam is honest and he's basically like well I want to do it for Citra because I want to marry her and she's Muslim and the guy's like well have you done any reading or research on the religion what do you know just like the way the Muslims live and and there's still a lot I don't know so the guy explains to him the process and that on Friday he will be taking the shahad which is a proclamation and testimony that you will serve and worship no other God but Allah so Sam is probably ready to grab his pants. Oh, and then he tells him that the guardian of Citra must give the mosque confirmation that he approves of the marriage before they can have the ceremony in the mosque. When I heard that we still need Citra's dad's blessing before the conversion, I... Yeah, it's terrifying. Only one week before they're going to get married and they're headed to the airport to pick up Citra's dad and two sisters. No, actually, I think they're just picking up one sister and the other ones are already at a hotel. Don't, don't tell my, to my dad straight away, but you're the person, you don't want him to punch you in the face. So Sam tells us that Citra's family was expecting her American boyfriend to be a rich guy who would just like, take her in under his wing and he sort of failed those expectations. So he's already nervous and feeling like he's not good enough in the dad's eyes. After I marry his daughter, I might have to do jail time and I'm worried Herman is gonna just say that's the last straw. They pick up the first sister and then Sam tells us that the sisters rip on him for the way that he looks. Any physical insecurities I have, Citra's sisters are quick to point out, call me Popeye. That is so mean. Citra, put your sisters in their place. What if it was the other way around? They've made me feel worse about myself, I think, than any like bully I've ever had in school. But I love them. Oh, wow. I would love to ask Citra to nicely take my defense. But whatever, they go to the hotel to meet Citra's dad and the other sister. Ya saya senang sekali datang ke Kansas dengan satu syarat ya memang Sam harus komitmen dengan apa yang dimulainya itu. And he asks Sam if he's ready to marry Citra and convert to Islam and Sam is like, "Yes, every Muslim I've ever met is so nice." Oh, and also it will bring me peace. Hoink. Apa yang menjadi alasan Sam? Uh, suatu apa ya? Sam passed the first test, he got the answer right. What's next? Sam, are you gonna take care of my daughter? Feed her, clothe her? I know I'm gonna give you a good life and I'll die trying. That sounded good. Did it work? I do kind of feel like I'm bull Citra's dad a little bit as he's telling me all this stuff and it's just kind of going out the other ear because all I can focus on is what I have to tell him. But of course, we don't get to see Sam tell her dad anything. So let's move on to Gino and Jasmine. The scene opens up with Gino throwing a bunch of flowers into the hotel pool. He's getting the patio all ready to surprise Jasmine. He's told her to get ready for a night out and she's finally ready in a beautiful sunshine yellow dress that really accentuates her knockers. I know, oh my gosh, look at those things. <laughs> I definitely believe I have romantic side and tonight, I get to show Jasmine that I am her Romeo Bonito. More like really boneheaded. They go down and Jasmine is like, wow, you did this? And he's like, oh yeah, do you like it? Do you like the flowers? Did I do a good job? You're ruining it. David, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you like them? I love it. Um <laughs> I'm speechless. Oh my gosh, Gino, your face. How are these two real? Wouldn't it be hilarious 
if these two were real. Only surprises from Gino are the ones that he leave in the toilet. So this is like a real, very beautiful, amazing surprise. Oh, isn't that nice? But the date has just begun. They sit down to eat and Jasmine tells us how Gino has shown him so much love during this trip. So she's going to express her love to him. I never dream the man of my life, you know, my partner, someone like you. What do you mean someone like me? Jasmine goes on to tell him that she would have never imagined falling in love with a hideous, cheap, broke beast like him. And that normally she's attracted to men like her ex, Den, who was built well and blonde. I was always like more attracted, like kind of muscular guys. Dan, he was more like the kind of man that I like, like blonde. And Gina's like, why? He has wrinkles around his eyes. You're both way better looking. I mean, he's got wrinkles all over his eyes. And Did Gino actually say he was better looking than him? Where does this delusion come from? Confidence is important, but I think we should be realistic. I promise with my heart that I'm gonna fight my emotions bad, you know? I'm gonna try to be a better person. She says, I won't even complain about your family. I'm going to do better, Gino. Then Gino gets all emotional and she's like, wait, what happened? What's wrong? It's very hard for me to see Gino crying like this because this is very, very unusual of him. He doesn't cry. I was really hoping that this was his reaction after she told him again that he's ugly, but no. He stands up and grabs a little bag he has hidden in a nearby bush. Then he pulls the present out of the bag and says, Tu quieres casarte conmigo. She says yes again. I actually forgot that he had already proposed to her. He wanted to re-propose with a new ring. Baby, I... I... <sighs> These two make the best faces of anyone on this show. This is why I want to marry you, Gino. Why I want you to become my husband. You're the love of my life. Gino. My Gino. How about baby? Ew, you know he loves that baby talk a little bit too much. Thankfully, we don't get any baby talk. But guess what Jasmine has decided to tell Gino? Who paid for her new booty? She breaks down how much money she spent and that she needed an additional 2,000 doll hairs. The only person who could provide that money to me as a loan was Dan. Yes, finally. Jasmine starts to explain that he gave it to her as a wedding gift, and Gino is speechless. This is the guy that you were like screaming when I was last time in Panama that you had sex with this guy. I'm, I'm gonna go and my ex. And then Gino's like, I hear about Dane too much. Dane. And then Jasmine said he bought it as a gift for the both of them so Gino could enjoy it. Ugh. Dan knew that you're the one. Who is gonna enjoy my ass? That is so horrible. I can't believe that we had such a good trip and you just killed all the momentum and, and happiness and... And Jasmine doesn't say anything. Do you think she's actually nervous? I don't think Gino would throw away the relationship at this late in the game, if this was real. Let's move on to a relationship that seems to be a little more genuine, and that would be Amelie and Clayton. We left them having a big argument at dinner and Annalie has locked herself in the bathroom and it was the first time in a while that I was annoyed with Annalie. Why is she making no effort to communicate with him? She likes to shut down, she likes to give me ultimatums, she likes to avoid anything that she perceives as difficult. Clayton finally gets her to come out, but she won't look at him, she won't talk to him. Ay, Clayton, ¿sabes qué? Si no me vas a entender o nada, no sé, siento que no respetas mis decisiones. Then help him understand you. Why are you wanting to make these decisions? Cansada, y si no vas a respetar eso, es mejor terminar. I cannot imagine that it's that big of a deal to throw away over two years of a relationship. Clayton would definitely not risk losing Annalie, a thousand percent. Instead, he reminds Annalie that her decision to never post anything on social media is a reminder of his past relationships when he was being cheated on. Un problema antes con relaciones, nadie quiere publicarme, nadie quiere compartir nada de nosotros, y 
I thought she already knew this. Didn't she? I don't know, apparently not because she feels so bad. She immediately posts a picture of them with a beautiful caption that makes it very clear they're in a serious relationship. Take note, Sarper. No me alcanzan las palabras para describir lo que siento por este ser tan increíble que llegó a mi vida para hacerme la chica más feliz del mundo. Clayton is touched. He's so happy. He grabs her face and kisses her. Then he picks her up and carries her into the bedroom. Clayton was so happy the next morning he did a little dance for Annalie and she ran away. <laughs> Then they go out to the pier, they're taking a walk along the beach, and they call up his sister Brandy. You can tell Annalie is really excited because she wants to ask Brandy to be her maid of honor, essentially. But Clayton translates, hey, will you throw her a bachelor party? Uh, she wants a bachelorette party. I already kind of had one in the works for you. Ah, uh, with a stripper. Que no escuche, que no escuche. Notice Clayton doesn't really have a reaction when she said that. So he starts listing off the other stuff they want Brandy to do. I need uh, a person in a guinea pig costume, potentially a llama or an alpaca, whichever is available, pictures, decorations. Brandy's like, no, I'm not getting you a llama. And he's like, well, it's a Peruvian wedding and we want to incorporate her culture. And Brandy says, so now I'm doing your bachelorette party, your gig. Photographer. I feel like you're just everything for me. And then Brandy hangs up on them and Clayton's like, oh, whoops, let me call her back. She doesn't answer and Annalie's like, why'd she hang up on us? ¿Por qué cortó la llamada? Mm, no sé. Um, maybe it's because you just dumped an entire wedding on her because you're on vacation for two days. Annalie, what else do you have to do besides plan a wedding? Give me a break. Real quick, we have Rob and Sophie. So the last time we saw them, they were having a blow up with Sophie's mom, Claire. I'm sorry, I've tried so hard to like him, but he is Rob the freaking knob and he always will be. And I hate that I'm on Rob's side on this one, but Claire immediately brought drama. Because my legs are shaking, I've got adrenaline, and I don't want to kick off at him. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Calm down. You don't need to bring out angry Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Not angry Claire. No. Rob is still sitting on the patio fuming over the fight they just had. He doesn't feel like Sophie cares at all how he feels and how his mom makes him feel. But Sophie is on her mom's side. Guys, I found Leonie. Oh, this, that, how, how can you talk to me like that? Da, da, da. And it's like, absolutely ridiculous, like a child. Like, grow up. My mom came in trying to be nice. He is the problem. Well, I can only imagine at this point what the mom is going to tell Sophie. Let's go. He's an idiot. Sophie's going to be like, yeah, okay. It cuts over to Rob's interview while he's out on the patio and the mom is like, he's referring to us as they. What, what do you want him to call you? She's looking for something to be mad about. They can't accept that they're not just an absolute always right person. He keeps talking about us as they, they. Dang, Hi, I'm like his fiance. Then Sophie tells us that she thinks he's jealous because she was raised more privileged than him. And I know exactly what she's trying to say right here, but I don't think that's what he's mad about. Sophie's not on my team. She's going to go stay the night with her mom now after we just had this huge argument. Instead of worrying about, is Rob okay? She doesn't care. Rob is such a drama queen and a baby. But he's right, leaving with her mom and agreeing to stay the night with her wasn't right. She should make an attempt to work it out with him before she takes off. There's not one thought in Sophie's mind right now about, that's my future husband. Maybe I should be worried about fixing this. And unfortunately, that's all that we got with these two. I wanted to see more drama with Claire. And then I have not been covering Ashley and Manuel at all. So if you saw the latest episode, what did you guys think about that bathroom scene? I, I was a bit shocked that that was going on with the friend sitting right there waiting. If you don't watch the show, you didn't miss anything. Okay. Anyways, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.